Rebellion against Russian President Vladimir Putin, at least for now. The near insurrection led by the head of the mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, ended with a deal made by the president of Belarus. Fox's Greg Pelgat is in Kiev, Ukraine, with that story. The uprising was over almost as quickly as it began. Crowds cheering in the streets near Russia's military headquarters in the city of Rostov-on-Don late Saturday after mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin called off his insurrection. The Kremlin says the mercenary leader cut a deal to stop his Wagner forces from advancing towards Moscow in an armed convoy. This is an unfolding story, and I think uh, we're in the midst of a moving picture. We haven't seen we haven't seen the last act. Despite the truce, Secretary of State Antony Blinken warns the situation between Russia and the mercenary group isn't done playing out. Russia says it's dropping charges against Prigozhin, and he agreed to leave the country for neighboring Belarus. While the city of Moscow is no longer under immediate threat, the incident called into question Russian President Vladimir Putin's authority. Uh, the immediate crisis may be averted. But the longer term consequences will ripple out and are changing Russia's political landscape. It remains unclear how much the short lived insurrection will weaken Russia's efforts in its war against Ukraine. Ukrainians are optimistic that the Russian fighting will create opportunities for their army to take back territory seized by Russian forces. We support in Ukraine. We want to stop this war, this absolutely crazy war uh, that it started for absolutely nothing. Ukraine never um, was dangerous for Russia. Ukraine's Minister of Defense telling Fox News that the counteroffensive now in its third week will be a game changer, a pathway to the end of the war once it gets going in earnest. In Kiev, Greg Falcott, Fox News. <laughs> So in the interview, my first question would be, why would Prigozhin actually do this? He's a former protege of Putin, and a Russia expert and Wayne State University professor Aaron Reddish explains why some of this might actually be personal. There's a human factor here. Uh, Prigozhin is a, um, a loose cannon, and, you know, uh, there's, uh, he kind of acted irrationally. I mean, I, I guess I always wonder, even if someone is not acting within the bounds of reason, certainly they have motivation that sometimes is possible to ascertain and sometimes not. If you had to guess at what Yevgeny Prigozhin was doing here, why would he take his Wagner troops very close or towards the capital and then all of a sudden decide, I'm going to abort this and I'm going to come to a deal that was negotiated not even between the two uh, entities, but apparently by the Belarusian president? What do you think is the motivation here? Uh, so he's he was clearly trying to get the ear of Putin, uh, and he was trying to get his attention. Um, and he did. He thought that this was going to be able to force his hand. Uh, Rigoshin had been a critic of the of the of the how the war was going and how the military was doing it. Uh, and that way, he kind of carved out a space in the Kremlin. Uh, as a way of safely criticizing the, the war. Uh, but he went one step too far. Uh, he thought that he could get the attention of, of Putin, we think, uh, possibly get himself into the Department of the Military or have another position in the Kremlin. And instead, Putin, um, according to reports today, kind of refused to talk to him. He thought that his troops kind of this ragtag band of mercenaries uh, were the ones who, who should be fighting and were doing uh, the dirty work while the military was not living up to its uh, living up to its role. Vladimir Putin certainly has had an uphill battle, and uh, he's in the midst of a counteroffensive in Ukraine currently. Uh, the prevailing theory is that his position is significantly weakened by this mutiny, as you describe it, and others have described it similarly. Uh, so what happens next? Can uh, Vladimir Putin continue on with this war of aggression, as has been described, against Ukraine, while having clearly mutinous uh, members of his own military. I mean, how how soon would it be before there might be another revolt within some faction uh, under this oligarchical system that uh, Vladimir Putin has constructed? So there are two answers. The first is nobody knows. Uh, we just don't know the inner workings of the Kremlin. What we can do is kind of read read the tea leaves. 
Putin, this was the largest threat to Putin's power uh, since uh, he came to power in 1999. That's significant. Uh, it's significant that uh, he went on the news, he went on the TV and made this five minute uh, rather aggressive speech that um, called uh, Prigozhin uh, treasonous, stab in the back, threatening civil war. In that way, he made it public. He made the fact that the state was weak public. It was also evident to Russian citizens and to the military that Prigozhin's troops got, um, you know, went into the hinterlands of, Mos uh, of Russia and got close to Moscow. That showed that the rear of the Moscow, uh, of the Russian military was weak. Putin needs a strong state. And this showed that the state wasn't as strong as he portrays. That's really important. However, there are no factions that opposed Putin's power at this point. Doesn't this mean that the people who were under Prigozhin have still loyalty to them, even though as part of the deal they've been offered um, the ability to have contracts and be absorbed by the Russian military? Those who are involved in the mutiny will not be allowed to join back into the army. Uh, the Wagner Group used to have something like 50,000 before the battle in Bakhmut, when they basically got destroyed. A lot of the troops were former criminals who didn't know how to fight uh, and were basically fodder for, uh, for the Russian uh, forces. There are also some experts who think that this might have been a move by Prigozhin to actually get more resources for his fighters. House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Turner said the march on Moscow appeared to have been planned very well in advance.